Hello everyone, so now uh, we will uh, be talking about complementary feeding, ok. So, so far we spoke about uh, breastfeeding and you know breastfeeding issues and uh, nipple conditions and breast conditions. Now uh, baby is say uh, 6 months complete. Uh, so, now we will talk about complementary feeding. Uh, my experience is that uh, you know of course I work in all different parts of India. Uh, urban slums, rural areas, tribal areas. I also work in US. So, you know, I have experience of not just uh, developing world, but also developed world. And, uh, you know, a complementary feeding stage is one of the most difficult stage, ok. Uh, I do see of course, uh, you know, breastfeeding issues we have tackled with this uh, 45 points cross cradle hold. In fact, Gujarat state has taken up uh, 45 points across cradle hold in each and every district, 33, 33 districts, all of them are trained on that. Uh, complementary feeding is the issue, ok. Uh, there are a lot of myths, uh, a lot of this cultural biases. Uh, India the um, number of children or percent of children who are getting minimum adequate diet from 6 months to uh, you know for younger children uh, 23 months is only 11 percent ok. So, NFHS 5 data has come out uh, you know in last data 5 years ago it was only 9 percent children were getting now it is almost 11 to 12 percent. So, still we have very poor complementary feeding in our young children ok. So, please do understand uh, this session very well. Uh, do try to implement in your own homes if you have young children and uh, if you do not then just kind of find out uh, in your family, extended family if you, uh, you know mothers have young children. Uh, do find out what they are eating, whether it is adequate, whether frequency is good enough, what food groups they are getting, and uh, whether dietary diversity is important, you know. So, please do learn about that, ok. So, now uh, what issue we found? So, I will talk about my experience a little bit before we go into uh, complementary feeding tutorials. Uh, main thing is most of the mothers they were not starting complementary feeding on time, ok. Uh, this was uh, actually true in tribal areas and some of the rural areas also. Uh, they are afraid that you know baby will choke or you know um, my milk is enough, baby is growing ok, uh, you know uh, they would have lot more other uh, kind of concern. Uh, so, many many tribal areas they start complementary feeding at 1 year of age. Uh, in, in fact, in urban slums I had uh, an opposite uh, kind of experience, they would start complementary feeding by 4 months of age. So, what they would start with, they would start with mare biscuit ok, which is kind of soaked in cow's milk and they would feed that child that mare biscuit which is nothing but sugar and uh, all purpose flour, you know your white flour. Uh, then they would start with lot of other kind of biscuits you know they just uh, uh, did not understand the concept of exclusive breastfeeding. Uh, and I am sure you know they wanted to start uh, complementary feeding because probably they realized that babies are not growing well and they were concerned. So, I can understand that concern also. So, you know obviously work on a good uh, latch and 45 points so that you know babies they gain good weight and families do not feel the need to start complementary feeding early on ok. Because we do see this issue not only in poor children, but also in uh, uh, kind of educated families and elite mothers, educated mothers you know they also have this concern of whether baby will like it, whether baby will eat or not you know. So, in this tutorial you know this coming to tutorials on complementary feeding guideline and on complementary food we have discussed how like uh, how to start complementary feeding uh, at the end of 6 months. So, once you complete your 180 days you know uh, that is when you are at the beginning of 7 months that is when you start. A lot of time when you when you say 6 months uh, you know mothers feel that as soon as child complete 5th month and a 6 months started and they start complementary feeding. So, it is not beginning of 6 months it is the end of 6 months ok. Uh, one more thing we also experience 
that uh, all these babies they were gaining good amount of weight on cross cradle hold there was no doubt you know they were they were almost 9 kg 8 kg some of them were 10 kgs at 6 months of age but uh, at complementary feeding stage you know a uh, few years ago they were not gaining weight uh, you know they would recommend you know give this uh, vegetable give this uh, fruit give this rice you know this khichdi and put this that you know but unfortunately it was not helping much what we realize and this is i really thank uh, one of my dear friend he kind of uh, kind of you know uh, asked me to kind of join one uh, consensus statement where I heard Dr. Michael Golden, you know, so he was talking about the uh, pathophysiology and biochemistry in children who were severely acutely malnourished. So, SAM children, we were writing a guideline for uh, management of SAM for Indian Academy of Pediatrics. And uh, you know, this Dr. Michael Golden, he is the guru of malnutrition and he spoke about um, what are these nutrients which are lacking in malnourished children. Uh, and he spoke about how if we can include those nutrients in the food, you know, and if you give this food to uh, malnourished children, they would just basically uh, not only have increased muscle mass, but they would also kind of grow, uh, you know, in height. So, when I was thinking about that, when I was uh, understanding his concept, you know, of type 1 and type 2 nutrients where, you know, he discussed about how type 2 nutrients are uh, kind of growth promoting nutrients which I have discussed in our, you know, first and second sessions on type 1, type 2 nutrient and uh, also, you know, how type 1 nutrients are more for uh, specific metabolic functions like anemia or say rickets or any of those specific functions, you know. Uh, he is focused a lot on type 2 nutrient ok uh, and he said that you know if you give food which is high in type 2 which is your high in protein your good uh, essential fatty acids in omega 3 and omega 6 uh, in good ratio then uh, also you know magnesium, potassium, chloride, sodium, zinc, sulfur. So, he discussed a lot about those nutrients and it just stuck to my mind I say that if, if a malnourished children can grow so uh, kind of so well on this kind of food which is high type 2 nutrient then why not children who are stuck who are like you know for 2, 3 months they have not gained weight at all and I kind of came back uh, in my clinic and I spoke to our nutritionist you know at Dipali Fargade and I said Dipali we need to include this food which will improve children's weight. Okay, because children are growing leaps and bound when they are young. So, I wanted, I did not want them to stagnate for a long time because then it, the height would suffer, right. So, and then we also knew that the children had very small appetite. So, uh, again, you know, uh, she, we, I told her, I said, I want uh, some kind of uh, homemade recipes which would not fill up st baby stomach because it is very small, you know, like a 9 month old hardly has 200 ml capacity where you cannot feed 200 ml, just maybe 100 to 150 ml, you know. So, then uh, I said, why you come up with something where I have want magnesium in that uh, food, uh, natural food, I want potassium in that food, I want, you know, protein of uh, protein, I want all these nutrients which are nutrient dense food in, in powder form which you can just add in children's food. So, they will get all this uh, nutrient from the diet, you know. And lo and behold, you know, uh, I had all these demands and she came up with some recipes, you know, it took us some time to figure out. But what she did, she basically took, uh, you know, some peanuts, some seeds like sesame seeds and other, you know, uh, like pumpkin seeds and lot of other seeds which are available in the market. Uh, then she, what she did is she made sprouts, dried those sprouts, you know, and then made uh, powder from the sprouts is also called malted uh, flowers and then she used all these different you know like uh, uh, curry leaf powder she made, she made uh, kind of moringa powders and moringa leaves or your drumstick leaves which are very very healthy and then she created all this kind of micronutrient dense powders you know and then we said that okay let us try in children's recipes you know and uh, when suppose mother would make a khichdi so she would say uh, have rice and dal but we said now you also while you cooking a khichdi you add one or two powders in this and then try to feed the baby and you know as soon as we started this powders we again started seeing amazing weight gain in the children. Now this issue we found more in children who are vegetarian okay because of course vegetarian children they don't have get enough protein from the diet 
ok. Uh, believe me they do not get good quality protein, mothers are not uh, kind of mothers are skeptical to start uh, you know paneer or uh, dahi or curd and you know uh, any of those products. They get predominantly dal and rice, uh, very monotonous diet they get. We have lot of studies which are already there in the uh, in uh, you know uh, magazines and all your uh, journals and you know uh, children they get hardly 2 or 3 uh, kind of food groups. So again uh, for non-veg children you know when they were eating eggs, when they were eating uh, meats, when they were eating say bone broth and all those kind of uh, non-veg food, uh, we were not seeing lot of uh, deficiency in those children because th those non-veg food is nutrient dense. Okay. So, when they, even if they eat little bit you know they get all kind of nutrients they get uh, kind of vitamin A, retinol, they get vitamin you know B12, they get choline, they get all these nutrients you know uh, except one nutrient which they lack if they are they eating predominantly non rich food is magnesium. But then we told them how to add magnesium rich food which is your nuts and seeds and also some of the beans are very high in magnesium right. So, once we understood this type 1 type 2 nutrients we kind of became more like pharmacist but food pharmacist you know not not the pharmacist which gives you medicine we would tell them okay looks like you are not eating good food which is high in zinc ye khana dalo you know so zinc which would be like high in some of this uh, again you know rajma has good amount of zinc and some of those other foods are high in zinc so we said okay now give child more rajma or give rajma is your kidney beans or give food which is you know uh, like cashew so people uh, like lot of tribals they have cashew trees you know so for example uh, one of the tribal area that we work in dharampur you know in Gujarat uh, so every tribal has a cashew tree. So we said do not just give uh, cashews, do not sell it, keep some cashews and make a powder and put in children's food and um, amazing weight gain that we saw not only weight gain but height gain or length gain also ok. So here again uh, I have also shown what are those powder recipes that uh, our nutritionist had created, do use those recipes in uh, children's diet mothers can use it uh, in her diet she I mean she can just eat she does not have to make powder but you know this powders are nutrient dense ok. So, you just use little bit and it will be lot of increase in nutrient density ok. Nutrient density is just basically the amount of nutrients that they will get from that amount of food ok. And also uh, another thing we also recommend that uh, if uh, if parents are ok definitely start with non veg food first ok, uh, especially eggs, meat, uh, chicken, you know fish is really good very high in omega 3, omega 6, omega 3 actually not omega 6 so much of course. Uh, but do focus on uh, starting with non veg food, if parents are vegetarian that is fine, uh, start with protein rich food like for example your uh, you know beans, uh, sprout them very important, cook them do not give them raw uh, that is again very critical. And, uh, give more millets, do not give too much of grain, avoid rice, avoid wheat those are nothing but carbohydrates you know uh, give her, give them much more millets you know your jawar, bajra, ragi uh, they are high in minerals, they are high in protein also, high in fiber also uh, and also give them uh, you know dahi so more of dairy products, do not give them milk because baby is getting mother's milk so do not give outside milk, no cow milk but you can give dairy uh, I mean uh, dairy product which is your uh, your dahi, your yogurt, curd, your paneer. Uh, you can also if mother can afford cheese is given too no problem. Uh, so, give those uh, high protein rich foods. Uh, vegetables are good, some of the vegetables are high in protein. So, your uh, you know cauliflower is uh, has good amount of protein, your spinach is good amount of uh, protein you know if you look at the protein energy ratio. Uh, also uh, start vegetables uh, after the protein rich food group ok. So, start with protein group first then start with uh, vegetables and then fruit should come last. Now what I see in, uh, in the field uh, especially with the educated mothers, they are so fascinated by fruits 
you know they feel that if I give fruits baby will be healthy. Uh, it is not that I am against fruit but uh, issues that I see in, uh, in the field is babies who are started with fruits first or mothers who kind of mix fruit in all the different foods that they give. So, they give they put uh, apple puree and khichdi, they put app, uh, you know some kind of puree, banana puree and some other food you know those are the babies they do have uh, sweet taste. And once they start liking sweet taste, it is very difficult for them to like other vegetables and other foods. Okay. So, I do not recommend starting fruits first, you start fruits last as a last group. So, maybe by 7th or 8th month you can start fruits, uh, do not mix with any other food groups, give fruits more as a dessert just maybe one or half a fruit in a day after the meal. Okay. Do not give fruit by itself, it is very high in fructose uh, and you know um, it is natural but still it is fructose. Okay. So, give it more in a dessert form and it is separately. Okay, and it is not necessary to uh, kind of uh, you know give fruits with every meal, do not mix it with any other food groups. Okay. So, again enjoy your uh, uh, you know uh, complimentary feeding video. Uh, after 2 years of age of course, when you start uh, you can continue breast milk for 3 years, 4 years, 5 years, but if you are starting cow milk do not do not give cow milk first, give them breakfast first and then give cow milk after once you stop breastfeeding after 2-3 years, you know that is important because do not fill up their stomach with uh, breast milk. Okay? And in situation where uh, if mothers are not breastfeeding or if a mother has passed away or there are any other issues, uh, please do remember that you should uh, kind of uh, you know uh, increase your number of uh, you know solids that you are going to give it you know. So, number of times which I have given shown in the video. So, do remember that we have to do that ok. And uh, mother's milk is the best continue mother's milk at least till 2 years of age do not stop it. Uh, during daytime I recommend to give more food after giving food then give uh, breast milk uh, and night time you can continue breast milk you know do not breastfeed first and then give food because that will fill up the stomach it is just a common sense ok. So, just give food first and then give breast milk. Another thing I am also going to I want you guys to understand about junk food. Uh, mothers have this tenden tendency to start lot of this junk food when they are young. Uh, please avoid that because uh, junk food will cause lot of issues with growth. It will also cause issue with lot of metabolic health. We do not want children to become a diabetic or have say high triglyceride level or any of those you know fat, fat, fatty livers. Uh, now, there was one very good uh, data which just came out by government of India. It is called CNNS data and in that we found that uh, children between 5 to 9 years of age uh, you know 30 percent children have try high triglyceride level ok and that is a very high number and you do not want children to have such uh, high triglyceride because that will cause uh, kind of a fatty liver and it will cause eventual uh, problems with uh, you know blood pressure or diabetes or heart disease or any of those ok. So, all that basically that foundation starts from uh, from uh, from conception to breastfeeding to complementary feeding and what food you are kind of giving ok. So, all that will basically it is it's, it's, it's basically part of the same it is a, it's a journey ok. And uh, you know that nowadays we see young adults getting heart attacks, young, young people getting you know diabetes, blood pressure, they have big belly and this are all because of wrong foods. So, when you give wrong foods what happens in young children they do not grow, they do not grow in height, uh, they, they become more like you know this way they grow and if the wrong food is started then uh, uh, and in, uh, young children then eventually they continue to eat that wrong food and they put on lot of weight and then they have all this metabolic diseases. Now, one more thing I want to discuss about Indian children or Indian uh, phenotype that we have something called thrifty gene that means that lot of time many of us are very thin. We may not put on weight, we may not look fat like uh, a lot of this Americans and Europeans you know they, they look fat, they look obese. We have something where uh, we have fat inside our body, we may not look fat from outside, but when you do, do so MRI when you do look at the visceral fat, we have lot more visceral fat, visceral means organ. So, we have lot more fat around our uh, organs and that will cause uh, metabolic diseases much earlier on. 
early on. So do not think that oh my child is thin or uh, I am thin so nothing will happen to me. It is all about what, how much fat you have around your liver, you know around your pancreas, around your heart and that will cause problems later on. Okay? So uh, remember healthy food, healthy life and healthy aging. Okay? Thank you so much. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on general guidelines for complementary feeding. In this tutorial, we will learn about the importance of starting complementary food for 6 month old babies. Complementary feeding guidelines for 6 to 24 month old babies. Let us begin. A baby must be breastfed exclusively from the time of birth to 6 months of age. 6 months of age does not mean the start of the 6th month of a baby's life. She has completed 6 months and started the 7th month of her life. At this age, exclusive breastfeeding is not enough for a baby. Along with breast milk, nutritious, home-cooked food must be given to the baby. This food is called complementary food. It must be given to a baby from 6 months to 24 months of age. It plays a crucial role in making the baby tall, healthy and intelligent. It is important to start complementary feeding at 6 months of age. Otherwise, the baby's growth and development will be hindered. There are also chances that the baby might reject solid food at a later age. Remember, complementary food supports breastfeeding. Therefore, breastfeeding must be continued till at least 2 years of age. The type, consistency and amount of complementary food varies with baby's age. There are specific recommendations for each group. They are discussed in detail in another tutorial in the same series. Now, let's discuss important guidelines for complementary feeding at all ages. Any new food must be first given separately to a baby. It should be combined with other foods later. This will help to assess if the baby is allergic to a particular food. Eating a variety of foods is essential for good nutrition. Every fourth day, add a new food to the baby's diet. Start with one tablespoon of the new food along with the previously given food. Gradually increase its amount every day. Nutrient-dense food from all 8 food groups must be added gradually. The first and most important food group is breast feeding. It must be included every day along with other food groups. Grains, roots and tubers are the second food group. Legumes, seeds and nuts are the third group. Fourth group is milk products. Meat, fish and chicken are the fifth group. Egg is the sixth group. Vitamin A rich fruits and vegetables are the seventh group. Lastly, the eighth group is other fruits and vegetables. Ideally, a baby's diet must include all eight food groups. If a baby's diet has less than 5 of these groups, it is a severe problem. It must be corrected immediately. Some babies do not have access to breast milk at all. Include food from the remaining 7 groups every day in their diet. Also, give them 500 milliliters of animal milk and two extra servings of meals 
per day. Always boil the animal milk before feeding it to the baby. Now, let's discuss the order of adding new food groups to a baby's diet. Along with breast milk, start giving complementary food from the first six groups. Baby needs a higher quantity of nutrients after six months of age. However, the quantity of food that can be given in the initial days is small. Therefore, nutrient-dense food from the first six groups can be given. These foods are rich in nutrients such as protein and good fats. They are important for the development of the baby's height and muscle mass. Good fats are important for baby's brain development. After these foods, start giving vegetables and fruits. Vegetables and fruits are high in vitamins and minerals. However, they are not as dense in protein and fat as the first six groups. Therefore, they are started later to avoid weight stagnation or loss. Also, fruits are sweet to taste. It is important that babies try a variety of tastes before the sweet taste. Trying different tastes helps babies to accept more foods. This reduces the chance of them becoming a picky eater later. Hence, fruits are added to a baby's diet after adding all other types of food. Giving fresh, seasonal, local fruits once or twice a day is recommended. Fruit can be given as a dessert after a regular meal. Fruit puree should not be mixed with baby's regular meals. Fruit juice is not recommended for this age group. It includes both homemade and ready-made fruit juice. Remember, continue breastfeeding up to 2 years. Avoid giving hard foods that may cause a baby to choke. Whole nuts, grapes, chickpeas and raw carrot pieces are examples of such foods. Freshly cooked homemade food prepared hygienically is the best for the baby. If baby food is to be stored, please watch our tutorial on safe storage. Safe preparation and serving of baby food is also discussed in the same tutorial. Please visit our website for more details. Along with food, Boiled and cooled water can be given to a 6-month-old baby. Start with 30 to 60 milliliters of water twice a day. It should be increased in hot weather as per the baby's demand. Breast milk and water are the best drinks for a baby. However, they must be timed correctly. Do not breastfeed or give water to a baby before a meal. A hungry baby is more likely to try new foods. Baby can be breastfed or given water 20 to 30 minutes before or after a meal. Adequate complementary feeding is necessary for a baby to grow well. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thank you for joining. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on complementary food for 6 to 24 month old babies. In this tutorial, we will learn about homemade nutritious complementary food. We will discuss its amount, type, and frequency. Let us begin with complementary food for a six month old baby. Remember,
complementary food should be started after a baby completes 6 months. Baby's first meal should be a thick puree or paste made of only one food. Let's see some examples of foods which can be used for this meal. Whole beans like sprouted, cooked and pureed chickpeas can be used. Grains such as sprouted, cooked and pureed finger millet can also be chosen. Split pulses like soaked, cooked and pureed split green gram beans can be used. Non-vegetarian foods like cooked and pureed egg, chicken, fish can also be used. Choose any one of them to make a thick paste. Here, sprouted, cooked and pureed red kidney beans is chosen as the first food. If required, add a little breast milk to the food to make a paste. Use boiled and cooled water only if breast milk is not available. The consistency of puree or paste is extremely important. It must be thick enough to easily stay on the spoon even when tilted. Feed 1 tablespoon of the first food for the baby's first meal on the first day. Give another tablespoon of the first food for a second meal on the same day. Along with these two meals on the first day, breastfeed the baby adequately. Please note, the tablespoon used in this tutorial holds about 15 grams of food. On the second day, feed 2 tablespoons of the same food per meal. Give 2 such meals on that day along with breastfeeding. On the third day, feed 3 tablespoons of the same food in each meal. Give 2 such meals on that day along with breastfeeding. Fourth day is the day to start giving a second new food. Choose one new nutrient-dense food from any food group. Food groups are explained in another tutorial of the same series. Here, sprouted, cooked and pureed finger millet is chosen as the second food. Make a thick paste of this food with breast milk or with boiled and cooled water. Start with 1 tablespoon of the second food paste per meal. Give it along with 3 tablespoons of the first food paste. A total of 4 tablespoons of food paste must be given in each meal. Give 2 such meals on the 4th day along with breastfeeding. On the fifth day, increase the amount of the second paste to 2 tablespoons per meal. Give it along with 2 tablespoons of the first food paste in each meal. Give 2 such meals on the fifth day along with breastfeeding. On the sixth day, increase the amount of the second paste to 3 tablespoons per meal. Give it along with 1 tablespoon of the first food paste in each meal. Give 2 such meals on the 6th day along with breastfeeding. On the 7th day, start giving a third new nutrient-dense food paste. In this picture, egg is chosen to make the third new food paste. Start with 1 tablespoon of the third food paste per meal. Give it along with 3 tablespoons of the first and second food paste. A total of 4 tablespoons of food paste must be given in each meal. Give 2 such meals on the 7th day along with breastfeeding. Gradually increase the amount of the third food paste 
to 3 tablespoons per meal. Always give it along with all the previously given paste. Feed a total of 4 tablespoons of food paste in each meal. Give 2 such meals a day to a 6 month old baby along with breastfeeding. Similarly, give a fourth new nutrient dense food paste on the 10th day. In this picture, fish is used to make the fourth new food paste. Then, Give a fifth new food on the thirteenth day and so on. Keep adding a new food every fourth day. Continue until the baby eats a wide variety of foods from all food groups. After starting new cereals and pulses, always combine them in a baby's meals. Give such combinations as soon as possible after 6 months of age. They will provide complete protein to a baby. Use various techniques that increase the absorption of nutrients from food. Some examples are roasting, soaking, germinating, fermenting and cooking. These techniques are discussed in detail in other tutorials of the same series. Freshly cooked homemade food prepared hygienically is the best for the baby. If baby food is to be stored, please follow the recommended safety guidelines. Safe preparation and storage of baby food is explained in another tutorial. Safe serving of baby food is also discussed in the same tutorial. Please visit our website for more details. Now, let's discuss complementary feeding for a 7 month old baby. At this age, gradually increase the quantity of food to half cup per meal. Also, increase the number of meals. To 3 per day along with breastfeeding. Please note the cup used in this tutorial has a capacity of 250 milliliters. At this age, the consistency of the food must be changed. The food given to a 7 month old baby should be mashed or lumpy. An example of such food is jackfruit seeds porridge. When the baby is 8 months old, increase the number of meals to 4 per day. Continue giving half cup of food per meal. Continue breastfeeding. At this age, stop giving food purees and paste to the baby. Start giving soft chunky nutritious food. An example of such food is sprouted and cooked chickpeas. When the baby is 9 to 11 months old, start giving soft finger foods. Finger foods are foods meant to be eaten directly with hands. Boiled egg and cooked vegetable pieces are examples of such foods. At this age, increase the number of meals to 5 per day. Continue giving half cup of food in each meal. Continue breastfeeding. After completing 12 months, a baby can start eating a part of the family meals. At this age, increase the amount of food to 1 cup per meal. Continue giving 5 meals a day along with breastfeeding. 5 meals a day can also be given as 3 main meals and 2 snacks. For a snack, 1 cup of nutritious food should be given. Fruit, curd, cooked cottage cheese and cooked vegetables are examples of snacks. Add 
nutritious nuts, seeds, and leaf powders to these snacks while cooking. Nutritious powder recipes are discussed in another tutorial of the same series. Remember, continue breastfeeding at least till 2 years. Also, do not add salt to the food prepared for the baby. Before completing 2 years of age, do not give any type of sugar to the baby. It includes jaggery, honey and fruit juices. Also, do not give tea, coffee, packaged food or drinks and any outside food. These were specific complementary feeding guidelines as per baby's age. There are many more important feeding guidelines for babies of all ages. They are discussed in detail in another tutorial in the same series. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thank you for joining.